What's going on, everybody? This is Bronco Jolo. After Friday's stream and my interaction with Alex 2.0, I decided to sit down and watch The Joker. I just finished the movie, so I wanted to get this out while my thoughts were fresh. Um, overall, really good film. I really did enjoy the movie. If I had to put this movie in my ranking of my top 10 from this past year, I would put this at number three. Yes, I can hear you already. You just say, no, honestly, it's number three. It is behind Star Wars, which is still number one. And it is behind The Irishman for me. I really loved The Irishman. I love that movie so much. And you know, I forgot to put it on the list. But as I put it in the comment section, I just forgot about it when I was doing the list. I was trying to do it off the fly off the top of my head and I forgot. I love The Irishman. I love Star Wars. This movie, in my opinion, and also technically, is not a better movie than Star Wars. There is a lot of problems with this film that I can go into. And I'm not going to go into all the issues because I have to go into specific spoilers for that. And I'm only going to give one spoiler and it's going to be at the end of the video. I'm not going to discuss this till I get to the end of the video because I want everybody to hear kind of what I have to say about it. And then I will give you a warning right before I talk about that so you can cut it off. I thought that the movie was really good, but I did think they could have pulled about 30 minutes out of the film. I feel as if it's dragged on that aspect a little bit. I get that we're seeing the slow descent into madness, but the problem is here is that he was already mad. He was always fucked up. He had already been locked up in Arkham once, and he hadn't even killed anybody yet. He has a myriad of mental illnesses, takes tons of medications. Uh, his mother is uh, physically handicapped as well, or at least we are. that's what we're led to believe. And it's just that they kept dwelling on some of those aspects to show how he became what he became. But the problem was he was already there. We really didn't need it. We could already tell he was there by just watching him. Now, Joaquin Phoenix does give a really good performance. Uh, is it my favorite? We'll get to that here in a minute. I don't feel that they added anything to the Joker mythos with this film. It didn't add it. didn't take away anything either. It's a really good film. It really is. And it's a really good performance by Joaquin Phoenix. He does a really good job. I've got to give him credit. The guy gives turns in maybe one of the best performances of the year of any character. I mean, it's really, really good. He does an awesome job. My problem with it is not in his performance. My problem is with the writing of the character. I really don't feel that they added anything. And in fact, I've said this before. Um, I do think, let me just say this. Joaquin Phoenix's performance was a better interpretation than Cesar Romero. Even though I love Cesar Romero, but it's different. It's apples and oranges. Apples and oranges. But I'm telling you how I would view it in my personal favors. It's better than Jared Leto, even though I still would like to see more of Jared Leto because I don't think it's fair to judge Jared Leto off five minutes. And people say, oh, well, he sucked in that five minutes. No, he didn't. You can't fucking say that because that's a bullshit statement because you can't judge somebody off five minutes of filming. Okay, you can't. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter. If I make a short five-minute film, you can't say that I'm the best or worst director of all time. You just can't do that, okay? It, it, it just is not... That's not how it works. You have to look at bodies of work. You have to see things in its entirety for it to be, you know, judged. And we didn't get enough time with Jared Leto to really judge. But I did like this more than that. Um, I did not like it more than Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson still is, and until I'm proven otherwise is the best Joker all-time, period, with the possible exception of Mark Hamill, but Mark Hamill was not a live-action Joker. Uh, also, once again, we're comparing apples and bananas this time. Okay? The Joker would like that. I feel, and this is where I'm getting back to my point, I feel like this Joker was written to be exactly what Heath Ledger's Joker was. There was no deviation between Joaquin Phoenix's performance when he becomes the Joker, in my opinion, to Heath Ledger's. They are the exact same. The only difference is what they're talking about. 
And what can explain that away is time. Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, he's been Joker for a while. This, he's just becoming Joker. It really feels like this entire film is the lead up into Heath Ledger's Joker. Like that was the backstory behind Heath Ledger's Joker. And you know what? I buy that. And that's fine. I don't mind that at all. It's cool. That's how I feel the character was written. I know people are going to disagree with me, but watch the two performances back to back. I'll I'll bet you anything. Watch them back to back. Watch the Joker. Turn it off. Watch Dark Knight. Just do it. And you'll see the even the look. Even the look of the Joker. Um, you know, the longer slick back green hair, you know, that's always falling in his face and he's having to move. It is Heath Ledger's Joker. It really is. And I really feel like he studied Heath Ledger's Joker when he was doing the role. That's just my opinion. I might be right. It might be wrong. It's my opinion. It, those are all subjective, right? Opinions, opinions are like assholes and I'm an asshole. I still really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. When he was the Joker, I loved it. When he was the Joker, it was awesome. Every time the Joker came out, I thought, okay, here we go. It's going to it's it's gonna get in gear now. And then it would slow down again. I'd be like, man, come on. All right, it was a good film, and it was, I guess, a study of, you know, what makes this person this person. But we didn't really need it all. We really didn't. Because he was already fucking crazy at the very beginning of the film. It's established in the very beginning of the film. You know, uh, I don't know how else to get that point across, but it is what it is. Other issues I had with the film also were in the writing. The things that didn't make sense to me as far as the character of the Joker goes, or even as far as the Gotham City role goes, I did not like that they made everybody out to be an asshole, including Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne was always supposed to be a good guy, and he's always been portrayed in Batman as a good guy. Now, I get that this is an alternate story. I get that, but I guess we were supposed to be sympathetic towards the Joker. Why are we supposed to be sympathetic towards the Joker? Why would we want to be sympathetic towards the Joker? The point of the Joker is kind of like the point of Michael Myers. We don't need to know all that. We don't want to sympathize. Making him be a sympathetic character was just like Rob Zombie trying to make us feel sorry for little boy Michael Myers. It's unneeded. The Joker is supposed to be a killing motherfucker, bad guy who is just off his rocker nuts in his own way, and we just sit back and enjoy the ride. That's what it's supposed to be, at least in my opinion. I didn't need a sympathetic Joker. I didn't want a sympathetic Joker. I don't like that everybody in this movie is an asshole. Everybody. Everybody in the movie is a jerk. The Thomas Wayne is portrayed as a huge asshole. I mean, he's talking down to people. He's calling all the citizens of Gotham names. He's, you know, just being a flat-out jerk to everybody. And I didn't like that at all. I thought it was a real slap in the face to the comic book characters of Thomas Wayne. And to the Batman mythos. I really did. I did not enjoy that part at all. I also have to say that... Now, here's here's where that spoiler comes in. So I'm getting close to the end here, guys. So spoiler warning right here. There is a big riot going on that was caused by what the Joker had done. Now, these things had been building and leading up. And Thomas Wayne knew knows because everything that's going on all the news footage everything that he is the focus of these riots that his being rich and his money and him running for mayor is the focus of these riots and that he is targeted at these riots why the fuck would he take his son and wife to see a movie during all this shit it made no sense to me whatsoever. Every other Batman story, when they get killed, yes, they get killed coming out of the theater. They kept that in this as well. It is not the Joker that kills him, by the way. It's just some other guy. And as he pulls the gun, he doesn't even rob them. As he pulls out the gun, he just says, this is what you deserve. And he shoots him, and then he shoots her. It didn't make any sense logically at all. Thomas Wayne knew that he was targeted. 
He knows that people don't like him right now. He knew he had security the entire rest of the movie. Why would he take his wife and kid out to the movie during all this? It made no sense. That is one huge point I did not like within this film. Um, the makeup of the Joker, I get that this is an early film. I can kind of get past it. I liked at the end when, you know, he spreads the blood up and that makes his new smile. I like that. Uh, it's hit and miss, guys. Honestly, it really is. It is a really good film. Like I said, I did enjoy it a lot. Probably I put it rank it at number three. It's a really good movie. It's shot really well. It's beautiful. Great soundtrack. And it looks really nice, but there are issues in the writing and there are issues that they did with this character that I did not like as a Joker fan. I'm a huge Joker fan. My favorite character of all time. You know, I'm planning, I, I haven't got it yet, but I'm getting a Joker tattoo. I love the Joker and I've watched every incarnation of the Joker. I've, I've read every comic. I love the Joker. And I thought this was a good movie, and I can accept it as an Elseworlds or alternate universe movie. But it really is, it really felt like they were just trying to marry up something to the Dark Knight, like constantly. That's what I felt throughout the entire film. And when I saw the Joker as the Joker at the end, that's what it felt like to me. And I couldn't get past that. But still a very good movie. Check it out. It's awesome. Not the best movie of the year, though. Sorry. Peace. Sometimes you just gotta ignore your enemies. Sometimes you just gotta make them bleed. I've headed up to here with all the fake shit. Fake friends huddled up. That's a snake pit. King Kong about to rumble on some ape shit. Stab you with some 